Greetings, folks. Dan Mack here with the Shred Shack, and I am joined today by the ever-proficient Tim Ripper Owens. Yes. How are you, Dan? I am phenomenal. How are you? I'm good, bud. Good, good. So I want to get a little bit uh, into the past, present, and future with you, but uh, let's, let's, of course, start with the present. So new solo EP, Under the Ripper moniker, Return to Death Row coming out soon, on the Virgin release, pre-orders being taken now on martyrstore.net. And from my understanding, a lot of the mentality behind the music was to create a vibe similar to that of Jugulator, your first release with Judas Priest. Is that correct? Well, it was. You know, um, Jamie Josta, who produced it, you know, Jamie, we've been friends for a long time, and he's been trying to get me to uh, to do something like this for about 10 years, I think, now. So he's like, man, we got we to gotta do something heavy again, like, you know, Beyond Fear or Jugulator. And, uh, you know, and I think the timing just ended up being right, the 25-year anniversary of Jugulator. And uh, he said, let's do it. And I said, yeah, it's good timing. Let's do it. And it, it's heavier. You know, I mean, I've done it throughout my career at times I've always said with a voice like mine I can sing just about any style of music mm -hmm. um, but my favorite style really to sing is, is just straightforward like this record is you know and uh, so so we went at it Alright, so I listened to Embattled, um, the initial um, single that got released onto Spotify, and it's got that traditional heavy metal vibe, and by that I mean like, you know, steady driving riff work backed by kind of a furious rhythm section, and, and of course your your distinctive voice over it. Now I follow that with the title track, and man, there's such a distinct difference. You go balls to the wall on that track. Um, is the EP an equal mix of these two vibes, or are we in for some more surprises? It, it really is kind of you know you you know Return of Death Row is is a fast heavy one. Mm -hmm. uh, we just released which is on iTunes right now. It's having some issues putting it out on the other other things. But uh, Die While We're While We're Alive is uh, another one that's it's the opening track and it's really balls out straightforward metal. And um, the Night Take It Back is another one. Those three songs are fast in your face songs. And then you have Embattled, which is right kind of in the middle. Uh, Silent Cage, which is a little more uh, commercialized you know, as it would get on mm -hmm. this record, and Her Heroes Dare, which is my favorite. It's just more of the embattled kind of range, you know, just uh, thumping heavy metal. Okay. Now you said that you've been friends with Jamie Josta for a while. Is this the first time he's produced for you? It is the first time. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, he's tried forever, and we finally did it. But this is the first time, and I was really happy. And excited to do it because after I heard the D. Snyder records that he had done, I I thought it was the best D. Snyder stuff for ages. I mean, it was such a great, such great records, and I thought this is going to be a good time here. Mm -hmm. and, and so your experience working with him was great. It's great, you know. And I think the thing is, he knows whatever vocals he wants me to do. You know, whether it's heavy, whether it's you know hardcore. Or, or regular metal or traditional metal, anything he throws at me or, or wants the song to do, I can take that that angle, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've also heard that there's also uh, a new KK's Priest album already in the works, possibly near completion. Is there any truth to that? It is, yeah. <clears throat> we, uh, it sounded great. You know, I think it's a little heavier than the first two. I think the vocal vocals on this one are, are have a heavier edge to it. Uh, like my solo record, and uh, it's really good stuff. It's coming together real good. You know, I got a couple more to lay down the vocals for, but uh, it's uh, it's moving right along. I mean, it's sounding great. Awesome, awesome. Uh, speaking of KK Downing, I want to talk uh, Judas Priest real quick. Now. I know for years that you've rallied to have your albums with them re-released, as they're still out of print technically. On even up to this point, they've been left off of of studio box sets. But I have seen a uh, a new Judas Priest box set that not only contains Jugulator and Demolition, but 98 Live Meltdown and Live in London. What are your thoughts? Well, I guess it proves that they actually can release them since they throw it in like a $500 box set. Yeah. So uh, uh, any, any rumors of them not being able to release the record kind of proves the point that they could release them. I don't know why they're not out. You know, listen, it, it's not like I'm going to make any money from it. Uh, it's more of the fans that get asked nonstop why they're not out. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and it's it's uh, it's amazing. You know, they just erase that part of the career. So, uh, um, uh, you know, I'm not really sure, but uh, that's their decision, and uh, um, you know, they just don't want it out there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we do see the day where they do get re-released, as they are fucking fantastic albums. Um, Moving a little further ahead in your timeline, um, so I'll personally say that I feel your time in Iced Earth is kind of underappreciated. Um, with John Schaefer now being alone in the project, would you consider singing for Iced Earth again if you got the call? No, no. We, and contrary to his his uh, issues he has, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't a good falling out. You know, I think people don't realize that, you know, I spent a long time since I was in Iced Earth. Uh, it wasn't a good ending, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, career-wise, I've moved on, and I and I do my thing now. And uh, um, no, I would never uh, do Ice Earth again. No, I understood. Okay, how about um? So you also did uh, Jude, uh, Ingve Valenstein's Rising Force on two albums. Uh, I've heard some things about Ingve being uh, difficult to say the least. How was your experience working with him? Mine was good. I mean, not till recently when you know he kind of throws his singers under the bus uh i actually had a great working relationship with him it was fun he was really easy to work with in the studio actually easier than anybody i've ever worked with i mean i would do one take and make out oh, i can do better you know that's good man i like it i think it's we don't want to lose that and uh i had a good time with him you know i just you know the weirdest thing is is i quit Ingbe, which i never even released that i that i quit Ingbe. so i think that's even the funniest part mm-hmm. um but i quit just because i was getting a lot of offers to tour solo and I had to tour, you know, I had to turn down uh, shows with Ingbe, so I was like, you know, um, I think it's time I quit so you can find another singer and, and do your thing and not worry about me, so, but I had, a, I had a good time with him, I mean, it's not that he treated other people good, I mean, I've watched him you know, sound men, light men keyboard players, you know, he didn't, he didn't treat them great, fantastic but uh, uh, I got it along great with Ingbe. Hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, so, looking at uh, some of the other projects you've done over the years, and and there's so there's so many Beyond Fear, Charred Walls of the Dam, Three Tremors, Spirits of Fire, New Revenge, Hail, Dio Disciples, and so on. Everything under the sun. Can we expect a future for any of these particular projects? Well, Three Tremors, we tour a lot. Okay, we do shows. Um, you know, I think the main thing I do is solo touring the world solo but uh a new revenge is one you know what i i look definitely look to do another record with it was one of the best received records it's funny because it's if you say things are light and shade i think uh uh that would be you know comparing my solo record i just you know, i'm just releasing it and a new revenge a new revenge is more of a hard rock straightforward record mm-hmm. and it's a well-produced fantastic record so i could see doing more with that but I got a lot going on. I mean, I have a new record that just came out with a band called Pyramid. I do a lot of guest singing. I'm not members of the band. Pyramid is one that I did. Uh, um, it's a progressive uh, metal record. I did one with Held Hostage. That's a, that's a rock and roll record, hard rock, rock and roll. Mm. Um, you know, uh, Leviathan Project, which is a, a hard rock, heavy metal. Uh, Engineers Project, Engineer Society Project, which is a hard rock metal record. All of these are guest singers. But but my main thing would be like the three trimmers and me solo and KK's priest. I mean these are things and a new revenge. They have le- those are things that have legs on it. Mm-hmm. Right, so it always seems like you're kind of one step ahead of the audience, always doing something. Um, do you have anything in particular planned in the coming months or years? Well, uh, we're going to release a full length record here with this solo this is just the beginning i mean our plan was to release this ep to get the the wheels turning and then you know mid-year or something like that we'll probably put out a full-length record uh kk's priest hopefully kk's priest will take up the next year as in touring and and putting the new record out i mean that's the plan is to put a new record out and then tour behind the first two records now we'll have two records out to to hit the world and, and and tour the world so that's i'm hoping that works out but I always have solo, the solo EP, touring solo, and probably I'd like to hit the road, obviously, when the time's right, with the Ripper thing, just using Ripper and just, you know, really going out and doing the music that I've recorded with this project, this band, 
uh, you know, throwing in jugulator tunes and mm-hmm. solo tunes and demolition tunes and making it a heavy set. Yeah. Now, I saw you a couple of years ago uh, here in San Antonio doing kind of like a half acoustic set. Um, is there any plan to do something like that again in the future? Uh, you know, I don't think so, but I, I really love doing it. And that Texas run I did was, was, was just a blast. It was so much fun. I mean, you know, I'd get up and play an hour and a half or so of, of acoustic songs and then get up and play with a, with a band and play five or six songs. And I thought it was a great, because my acoustic set pretty heavy as well you know i'm doing mm-hmm. sabbath and, and just all kinds of stuff so i'd love to do it again but i don't know when i would do it you know because i'd rather hit texas doing a solo tour mm-hmm. if i'm going to do something like that you know yeah i gotcha um so you had mentioned a moment ago that uh you do a lot of guest vocals and everything you, you know it's i'm pretty sure i've seen you just post like hey i have downtime contact me if you want to do if you want a guest appearance and that list of appearances that you have is long um has there been any artists you work with in particular that made you say like, like man they're gonna be a big deal someday well i think all of them i think that really i mean you're doing the the ones I mentioned already is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the and the great thing is with like the the Pyramid record, you know, I wrote a lot of the songs, the vocals on on that record. This last one I did, I've done two of them now, and this all came about during COVID, you know, because when COVID hit, I'm like, what am I going to do? I tour, I make my money touring mm-hmm. solo, and with three trimmers, what am I going to do? And then that's when I start posting. It's funny you say that because I'm going to have some downtime right now, so I'm thinking about making a little post because I'm going to be home. I'm going to take December and, and some of January off. And uh, I'm still recording a KK's Priest, but I'll have some downtime to work on some songs here and there. And so, and if anybody wants me to guest on a song, they can just get a hold of me at rippervocals at gmail.com. It's easy as that, rippervocals at gmail.com, or we can talk about it. But it's, you know, people say, why do I do so much? I'm like, well, that's what I do for a living. I'm a musician. You know, I, I'm fortunate that I can make a living just doing music mm-hmm. and these these songs and records i mean i think la- the one year i put out a pyramid record a held hostage free trimmers uh leviathan project and engineer society project all in one year and they were full full records and then i guessed on a bazillion songs mm-hmm. um and it's fun to do it because it's all different types of music uh, i make a living and, and i get to do you know and i play with musicians from all over the world and they send me their stuff and uh so it's uh it's fun to do i mean i haven't done it as much uh the past six months because i've been busy started touring i started doing shows again and and and, you know australia alaska just about everywhere spain latin america but i you know i've done a few this week actually i did a few besides doing the kk's priest i think i did two or three songs this week for some people and uh um, but yeah, I'm thinking about it now for that again because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make some downtime. I might as well work in my studio. Yeah. So, last primary question. Um, I know you do recorded messages on Cameo. Uh, we've even purchased one in the past. What was the funniest request you've ever received? I, I can't remember. I got a few strange ones, but mo- most of them are, you know, uh, just basic, you know cheering people up or congratulations anywhere from sobriety to or you know you know during covid i got a lot of to cheer people up once mm-hmm. but so i haven't gotten a whole lot of funny ones i'm hoping i get some and that is true you know you can look me up on cameo and i'll do anything you know from you know telling someone that that their wife wants to divorce them to uh, uh i'll do whatever <laughs> you want you know i hate you know you're an asshole or whatever whatever needs to be done um majority of them are happy birthdays and I do good ones. You know, they usually I usually waffle on. A lot of times I'll do them when I'm going into the gym. So I sit in my car, either going in or coming out of the gym, and I'll sit in my car and do them. And I go on. It's not just your typical. I don't do drunk Vince Neal ones, you know, like you did that one time. I do kind of uh, just funny ones, normal ones. And I, have a good, I have a good time with it. They're sincere, and I talk to the people. I mean, they're fans and friends, and and, and uh, it's a gift, you know. So so anybody can look up Cameo, especially during the holiday season, I mean, it ends up picking up. And I'm cheap on there, too. I'll see these prices of people. I'm like, holy crap, people actually get those? I mean, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's fun doing them. 
Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so um, going on to the uh, second segment of our interview, we call this lightning round. So I'm going to ask you a series of short questions, and you just answer as fast as possible, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, so boxers or briefs? Both. Chicken or steak? Steak. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Waffles or pancakes? Pancakes. Elvis Presley or the Beatles? Oh, my God. That's horrible. <laughs> uh, I, right now, I'm a, I'm a huge Elvis fan, but right now I'm going to say Beatles. Okay. In Black Sabbath, do you prefer Dio or Ozzy? Oh, it's not Dio. Not even close. In Van Halen, do you prefer David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar? Not even close. David Lee Roth. Who would win in an arm wrestling Well, wait a minute. Well, Dave, David Lee Roth for the past, not now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I can, I can go with that. Who would win in an arm wrestling match, Lemmy or God? Lemmy. Trick Wait question. a minute. Lemmy is God. There you go. <laughs> Trick question. Uh, sum up Metallica's last 25 years in three words or less. Uh, amazing. And if uh, let's say let's say you're stuck on a desert island with the band KK's Priest, which member gets eaten first? Uh, well, I think we'll eat KK first because he's the oldest, so we can you know. Of course, he's the leader, so he he won't let us. But <laughs> we'll eat KK first. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so. Uh, Yes, Ripper, uh, Return of Death Row, coming out soon. Uh, do you know the exact day? Because I couldn't find it. Well, it says December 9th, but you can pre-order it. It's out there now. Yeah. Um, it's out there on martyrstore.net, M-A-R-T-Y-R store.net. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I'll vinyl, cassette, CDs, shirts, hats, posters, great bundles. It's out there now. So Yeah. And you can find anything on... My Facebook page is Tim Rippon's official, or it's easy. Just type Tim Rippon's, you'll find me. Instagram, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, whatever. It's all I'm out there. I have a uh, one of those link pages, whatever the hell it's called. I don't even know for sure, but those um, that's on there to find all my my pages. Okay, excellent, excellent, Tim. It's been an absolute blast to talk to you. I really appreciate the time you spent.